So what are the signs that your wife doesn't love you anymore? If you're on this channel, I'm going to assume that you're either about to get divorced, maybe you've already been divorced, or maybe you're in that limbo phase where you're not really sure what's happening and you're looking for some answers to see if you can figure out what's going on in your wife's head. After all, we're not rocket scientists here, we guys, and it can sometimes be very difficult to figure out what women really want. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from DivorcedParentsClub.com, and I'm on a mission to help other guys just like me who are either about to get divorced or already been divorced figure out how to make sense of this life moving forward. But in this video, we're talking about something that's really already too late for me. My wife and I, our divorce, we both signed the paperwork. We're just waiting for the judge to sign off on it. Pretty much done. She asked for a divorce out of the blue about 11 months ago. It's too late for me. And I didn't see these signs that I'm about to go over with you in the moment. In retrospect, though, a lot of them were there. I just didn't see them. So we're going to get into what those signs are how to tell if it's too late to save your marriage, and if it's not too late, we'll talk about what you can do right now to put things back on the right track. So what are those signs that she is maybe not in love with you anymore, or maybe thinking about leaving you? Well, there's gonna be a reduced level of intimacy, and I'm not just talking about sex. I'm talking about emotional intimacy as well. There's just gonna be less of it coming from her. You, you may see indifference, whereas normally she would have either been super passionate in a positive way or maybe super angry and defensive in a, a negative way. Any level of emotion means that there's still an emotional connection to you. So when you see indifference, that means that that emotional connection is all but gone. That's not a good sign. But you might also see that she's more focused on herself. She's not as focused on being an attentive wife with you. She's focused maybe more on her career or maybe her hobbies or maybe her friends and other things. And you're just kind of on the back burner now. Those are signs as well. And even though I mentioned indifference as being a big one, it could also be that she's just like more angry and more on eggshells, not because the situation or your actions warrant it, but she may be looking for reasons to justify why she's feeling what she's feeling. After all, women are emotional creatures. They feel what they feel, and they're not analyzing it from a logical standpoint the way most of us guys do. And their feelings change all the time. And she may have been madly in love with you for 10 years, but maybe you've screwed up for the past six months, and those 10 years don't matter. What matters is that for the last six months, she hasn't been feeling the way she wanted to feel by being your wife. And those other 10 years, they're gone. Doesn't make any bit of difference. You could have been a saint of a husband for 10 years, but if you've screwed up for six months, she could be done. So that indifference is key, but she may also be starting fights basically as a reason to justify not wanting to be with you. Maybe, you know, if she makes you out to be the asshole, by starting fights, then it's easier to justify in her mind. And let's be honest, when she's having conversations about you and her relationship with her friends, and she's definitely doing that. The next question, guys, like in my situation and in this situation want to know is, is she cheating? And there are some telltale signs that a woman could be cheating. Now, I don't think my wife was cheating on me when she asked for a divorce. I don't think that she's in a relationship now with a guy that she's known for seven years. And I bet that there were probably some things that happened along the way that maybe set the table for them now being in a relationship. But I don't really think that they actually were having sex prior to her telling me that she wanted a divorce. But there are some telltale signs that you can look for in case you suspect your, might, your wife might be cheating on you. For one, we're, any, with any of these things that we're talking about, we're talking about changes in behavior. If she's always behaved one way, then that may not be a red flag, but if she's suddenly now behaving differently in one of any number of regards, that could be a potential red flag. So the first is, what does she do with her phone? If she normally used to set it up on a table when she would sit down somewhere and now she's turning it upside down, that's a red flag. If she's always turned it upside down, again, not necessarily anything going on there, but changes in behavior, setting it down now. Maybe she's changed her password. Maybe you used to know her password and she knew yours and now she's changed it for no apparent reason. That's another potential red flag right there. If she's going out more than she used to, and if she's, especially if she's putting more attention into her appearance, 
When women start to lose interest in us, their husband, their attention to their own appearance often goes down. They stop wearing less makeup, maybe they put on a little bit of weight, maybe they dress more frumpy and wear jogging pants a lot and stuff like that. But if you've suddenly noticed a shift where, all right, she's wearing more makeup, she's wearing fishnets and she's dressing up better and she's when she's going out and she's not doing those things when she goes out with you, those are big red flags. And then the last thing is, is she vague or non-committal about where she's going when you ask her, so, you know, she just says, oh, I'm going out tonight. You're like, oh, where are you going? Oh, I'm just meeting up with friends. You know, something vague and non-committal is a red flag. And then along those same lines on a more extended basis is she won't make long-term plans with you. Like if you say, you know, hey, next summer, I was thinking we should go to Costa Rica. And she's like, well, I'm not, you know, she hems and haws and doesn't give you a really straightforward answer. Granted, women don't always give you a straightforward answer anyway, but usually hemming and hawing and being vague and non-committal actually means no. That's their way of saying no. Women just don't like to hurt our feelings by being direct communicators. That's just kind of how, how we're built. And obviously there are exceptions to this, but I'm speaking in general terms here. That is kind of how men and women communicate. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button right now and the subscribe button. Hitting that like button sends a great signal to YouTube and then they're going to show it to more people in your situation and I can help even even more people. But back to the question at hand here, what are the signs that your wife doesn't love you anymore and what are some of the other follow-up questions that naturally come with that? The next question guys always want to know, is it too late? And the reality of it is, is most women don't leave or say anything if they're unhappy in their marriage or their relationship until it's too late. I don't know why that is exactly. It's not fair. And that's exactly what happened in my case. My wife said she'd felt this way for about two years and never bothered to say anything. And by the time she told me she wanted a divorce in April of uh, 2021, uh, it was too late for her. She wasn't willing to work on it. She wasn't willing to put forth any effort. She wasn't willing to go to marriage counseling with the intent of trying to fix our relationship or rebuild our marriage. She wasn't willing to do anything in short. She just wanted out. Another thing that women will start to do again, along those same lines is, again, they won't communicate or do anything until they're totally done. And so by the time they say something, it's often too late. But you'll also notice sometimes that women will kind of line up your replacement while they're building up to that moment because they often don't like to jump ship until they have another ship to go to. And in my, my, my case, in my wife's case, I, I don't know that she actually had this guy lined up uh, that she's in a relationship now. But like I said, they had been friends for about seven years, so who knows? Um, I, I think their relationship started moving towards that much later after she told me that. But often women will kind of have some men on the back burner, not necessarily that they're doing anything with, but they're just kind of there. They're, they're there as a backup plan, basically. And then if there is a chance to save your marriage, but it's already reached this point where she's either told you she wants out or she has actually left, often the only way to actually fix that is to fully let her go. In other words, in my case, divorce my wife, but if I was, if we were just boyfriend, girlfriend, I would let her go. I would completely let her walk away because women need to feel safe. They need to feel like you're their rock. And if you've been doing things that are unattractive behaviors, you're maybe you were needy, you're clingy, maybe you're short tempered, whatever it is, she no longer feels safe and she no longer feels that, that connection that she needs to feel in order to feel comfortable in the relationship. And in order to rebuild that feeling of safety for her, the only way she can do that is to actually fully leave the relationship to where she knows that you're no longer a threat. And I'm not talking about a physical threat. She knows that you're not a physical threat, but she needs to feel that level of safety and comfort. And right now, for whatever reason, she's not. And the only way she gets back to that place is to get completely out of the relationship. Then she may start to come back around again, especially if she sees that you have moved on, you're not moping and doping and feeling sorry for yourself and dwelling on things. Maybe you're even starting to date and life's pretty good. I, you know, maybe, maybe I didn't need her. I'm moving forward with my life and that's the best way to possibly attract her back if that's your goal. But you got to let her go completely. 
get on with your life, live your life to the fullest, and maybe, you know, let her see and hear about some of that. So lastly, what do we do? Assuming it's not totally too late. So first of all, you've got to address the issue head on. Like I mentioned, women feel with their emotions. Guys tend to think logically. And so we can't, we can't expect women to communicate in the same way that we do. And they shouldn't expect that from us. But we need to understand that what they're feeling right now is emotions. And as I mentioned earlier, they could have felt totally great for 10 years in terms of how they were emotionally feeling about you. And then you screw up for six months and that 10 years no longer matters. All that matters is they no longer feel safe, they no longer feel connected, and you're the reason why. Now, the reality of it is, it takes two people to make a marriage or a relationship, and it takes two people to break it. So, no matter what was going on there, just know that you have some stuff to own, and so does she. And you can't control her, but you can control you. So I want you to really own your shit. Own the stuff that you know that you did in the relationship that caused damage. In my case, that was being complacent and taking her for granted and not whining and dining and romancing her like I had earlier in our marriage. And that leads to just kind of, it gets kind of boring and stale. And, and especially in my case, I also started to get a little bit needy and clingy probably as I saw her start to pull away. She has an avoidant attachment style and I have an anxious attachment style and those two are commonly drawn together because ultimately they both want the same thing. They want to feel that love and the connection, but the avoidant attachment style often keeps people at arm length because it's just safer that way. They were probably wounded in childhood in some way, either physically or emotionally or both. And it's just a whole lot safer to kind of keep people at arm's length. But that doesn't mean that they don't crave that emotional connection with somebody else. They just don't know how to get it. And then the anxious attachment style, which is what I am, also has that childhood wound. But instead, we hold on tightly and cling and smother uh, to try and hold on to that emotional attachment. And that doesn't work either. And then especially when you got these two styles together, they can really be like oil and water if the two don't recognize what they're bringing to the table. And my wife and I did not recognize our attachment styles until after she asked for a divorce and we began to kind of dig in to our own personal shit. And that was something that I came to realize. I think she did too though. But you've got to own what you brought to the marriage that was detrimental. You've got to own that, apologize for it. Don't dwell on the apology though. Don't apologize profusely over and over and over and over again. That's just going to make you look weak and needy. But do say it once, one time, and really mean it. Then understand that women only believe what they believe in that moment. And again, like I was saying earlier, it doesn't matter what she felt about you 10 years ago or for the 10 year, prior years of your marriage. All that matters to her is what she feels right now. And you could have been fantastic for most of your marriage and screwed up in the last month even. And all that matters is what she's feeling right now. So you've got to recognize that Try not to give yourself credit for, well, but I was a great husband for years. You know, that doesn't matter. All that matters is she's not feeling safe, heard, respected, and loved and cared for in the way that she wants to be loved and cared for right now. So what can you do to get back to providing her that safety net? Then I want you to identify between one and three things that each of you can commit to doing to try and improve the marriage. I say one to three because if you make a long list, it's gonna get complicated and challenging, just like when people set New Year's resolutions. And the people that set a New Year's resolutions, they have a long list. I guarantee you two weeks after, after New Year's, they're gonna be off that list and they're not gonna be following any of it. So you gotta make it achievable, you gotta make it specific, not just vague, like you know, if, going back to the New Year's resolution thing, you know, I wanna lose some weight. All right, no, you gotta say, I wanna lose 10 pounds by this date, which means I need to lose X number of pounds a week along the way. You gotta be specific, tangible, realistic, and then break those goals down into baby steps. That way, both of you know exactly what you need to do when you need to do it. Then I want you to focus on being the best you that you can be. You can't control her. You can't control her feelings. You can't control what she says or does, and you shouldn't try. Those are recipes for disaster. 
all you can really do is focus on yourself, your own actions, statements, reactions, things like that. Just focus on being the best that you can be. If you are short-tempered, start to find some ways to relieve stress. Yoga, meditation, martial arts, something. Find something that helps you relieve stress so that you're not as tense and as apt to fly off the handle. If you've become complacent, then start to really dial in the romance, but not too quickly. You don't want to push her away. Right now she's on the fence. She's not sure if this is going to work. So you don't want to like suddenly overwhelm her and make it seem like you're trying to buy her affections back. But do begin to slowly become the person and the husband that she really wanted you to be, the person that you were when you were dating. That's what she really wants. That was the person she fell in love with and she can fall back in love with that person as long as you start to present that person consistently. Don't just tell her what you're gonna do. She's gotta see it. She's gotta feel it and consistently over a period of time. Then lastly, I want you to avoid doing things that push her away. What do I mean by that? Well, there's two different categories. One is gonna be being needy and clingy and smothering and, or controlling, where you're desperately trying to hold on to what you've got. And you think, well, surely if she could just see how much pain this is causing me, she would wanna stay and fix things not going to work. I guarantee you that's not going to work. That's just going to push her away. And if there is a male orbiter out there, somebody, you know, that she has lined up waiting in the wings, you're just going to push her right into their arms. So you don't want to do that. The flip side of that though, is you also don't want to be like angry and like, what do you mean you don't want to work on things? And what do you mean you don't want to save our marriage? You know, you know, what kind of tramp are you to, to not want to make forth and put forth some effort into trying to fix things here? Why, why in the world would you just dump this on me and then it's too late and you're not willing to do anything? That sucks. You don't want to be that way either. It's totally okay to feel that way. I know I felt that way, still kind of feel that way. And I think those feelings are valid. I do think my wife should have told me sooner and been willing to put forth some effort to try and save our 16-year-old marriage that we have that also brought us three amazing kids. She should have been willing to do that and she wasn't. And that's on her. But I can't force her to do anything. Not going to try. Recipe for disaster. But don't go there. Don't go to an angry place either. Don't go to a resentful place. Don't try and guilt trip her. Those things are not going to work. You just need to focus on being the best version of you that you can be. And if anything works to reattract her to you, it will be that. I hope this video helps you. Again, hit that like button and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.